What's up everyone? A lot of people have been asking me lately for some tips on how to do remixes in Ableton Live and a couple people have requested specifically how to extract acapellas from a completed stereo tune. So I'm going to show you a couple of techniques and uh, over a couple of videos here about how to use a few of Ableton's tools to grab the vocal out of a completed tune where you can't grab an acapella normally, how to create your own acapellas effectively. So I've grabbed a tune from one of my good friends. He's a singer and songwriter from uh, Calgary, Alberta, and his name's Angus Wilson. He's a beauty of a singer, amazing guy. Uh, ch definitely check him out. His music is all over iTunes. And I've grabbed one of his songs right here, and I'm just going to use it as an example uh, because hopefully he won't sue me for using it. So <laughs> big ups to you, Angus, for letting us use your tune. Appreciate it. And uh, here's a little clip of the track so you guys can get a feel for what we're going to be working with. I was younger. I was just too young to tell my older brothers. Okay, so you can hear in that tune we've got the vocal, we've got a drum kit, kick, snare, and hi-hats, and we've got a bass, and we've got guitar. And so this is going to be a pretty challenging piece to work with, I can already tell, because usually when th with a vocal, you're looking to be able to isolate it by frequency range. And unfortunately, what really sits in the same frequency as the vocal is guitar and a snare drum. So I know we're going to have a bit of a challenging time. So the first thing we're going to use is an extreme EQing technique. So we're going to go up here and grab Ableton's EQ plugin, uh, the EQ8. And we're going to use this to extract as much of the vocal and eliminate as much of the other elements as possible. Now, normally what I'd be doing is I'd be using the EQ8 here to, to roll off the, the bass in the low end and maybe take off some, some high in the top end or find that snare drum and, and take that out. However, uh, that's not going to work as well as we might hope in this scenario. It doesn't produce the best results. So thankfully, this EQ has a special mode that a lot of people don't really ever use on it, and it's called MS. And what MS is, is it stands for mid-side, and it splits the EQ into basically two EQs. You get one EQ curve and spectrum for anything that's coming right up the middle, your mono information effectively, the, the information that is the same between your left and right channels. So that's what this is, this is mid. And you can click right here and it goes into S mode or side mode and then you get a completely separate EQ on the material that differs between the left and the right. Now the reason why this is important is because I know from basic audio mixing principles that usually the lead vocal is mixed dead center. It's not panned left or right, which means that if we can cut out the material on the sides, that's going to give us a, a much better audio file to work with. Now, obviously, when we're removing audio, audio information and we're EQing things, we're not going to get something as clean as the vocal just isolated on itself by its own. Um, so we're going to use the EQ to do as best we can. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the EQ into mid mode. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to remove everything. I'm basically going to take this high pass. I'm going to remove everything up the middle channel. What this is going to allow us to do is to hear what's going on in the sides. And I want to hear if the vocal's been panned at all. So if the vocal's been panned anywhere other than dead center, we're going to hear the vocal in here. Because the only thing that shows up in this area are things that have been panned. So let's have a listen to it and find out what's going on in the sides. Okay, so we can hear a lot of hi-hats. We can hear a lot of room noise, the reverb, because reverb is typically stereo and panned. And we can also hear uh, the guitar, the lead guitar. So as a starting point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the side channel, and I'm going to remove, using the high-pass, everything in the sides, because I know the vocal isn't sitting in the sides at all. So if I remove everything, that's effectively going to remove a lot of the hi-hats. It's going to remove a lot of the room sound and it's going to remove a lot of the guitar, which is going to be very helpful. Now I'm going to go back to the mid and I need to roll this down again so we can actually hear stuff. Now we can use this high passing EQ to get a lot of the bass out of there. We want to remove the kick drum, we want to remove the bass. So I'm going to set this and I'm going to listen to the track and uh, first of all before rolling out the bass, let's just hear what that um, extreme high passing of the sides channel did for us. Let's just listen to this. I was younger. I was just too young to tell. 
I'm going to AB that for you by rolling down the sides channel again. I was younger. I was just too young to tell my... So we can definitely hear it's made the vocal more clean. We are getting a cleaner vocal. However, we are still getting a lot of the kick and bass and snare and stuff in there. So now we're going to get um, working on the mid channel. So we're going to take this EQ and we're going to play the track. We're going to roll it up until we can hear most of the vocal still, but we've cut a lot of the bass and kick drum. I was younger. I was just too young to tell my older brothers. They knew me way. Now the balance here is to get it high enough that you're cutting out the kick and the bass, but not so high that you're giving the vocal an extreme high passed feel. So that's good enough for me right there around 625 hertz. Very next thing I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna put this uh, EQ4 into a shelving mode, and I'm gonna use this to slice out a bit of the uh, hi-hats. And I'm just gonna gain it down a little bit, and I'm gonna take this up and use that to take out a bit of high end. I was I... All right, now the main problem we have is the guitar and the snare drum are still conflicting with the vocal. The big culprit here is the snare drum because the snare is mixed really, really loud in the mix and it's definitely in the same range as our vocal. So I'm gonna use a technique called frequency scanning where I'm gonna take EQ3 here I'm going to increase the gain up to its maximum, and this is going to get loud, so I'm actually going to reduce the volume of the track. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to reduce the Q, so it's a very narrow Q, and I'm going to scan up and down the frequency spectrum while listening to the tune, and I'm going to be listening for where that snare drum is the heaviest. Okay, so just bear with me while I do this. I was younger. I was just too young to tell my older brothers They knew me way too well They call Okay, that's around where I'm feeling it's pretty heavy, around 3.2k. So now that I've got that dialed in, I know where to cut. So it's a way of accentuating the part we want to cut out so we can hear it really prominently. And then all we do is we do a gain down on it. Now we use a narrow cue for this because if we use a really heavy cue obviously we're going to be cutting everything out and it's going to sound a lot more audible so we use a narrow cue, a more surgical cut when we're removing this much, this deep a cut, okay? I was younger I was just too young to tell my older brother Okay, so I've, I've increased the cue a little bit, and we are cutting out a lot of this audio information, but it's leaving us with a relatively clean vocal. So let's listen to the original with this off, and then I'm going to turn it on, and you'll be able to hear the effect that we've created. I was younger. I was just too young to tell my older brothers. As a final step, the other thing I might do is just take EQ2 here and do the same thing for the hi-hats. So I'm going to take EQ2, I'm going to boost it up to its maximum, I'm going to make it nice and narrow, I'm going to scan through the frequency spectrum to see where our hi-hats are sitting. I was younger, I was just too young to tell my older brothers. That's about where the hi-hats are heaviest in the mix, so now I'm going to take that surgically cut down reduce the cue a little bit I was younger. I was just too young to... yeah that's a good sweet spot for uh, for this uh, acapella right here so obviously not as clean sounding as if we just had the clean acapella without any other instruments in there but this has gone a, a long ways to getting us a cleaner vocal than we otherwise would have we've cut the bass out the kick drum out with the high pass and then we've used the the removing the sides of the equation with the mid side eq to remove the room sound and the panned elements of the hi-hats and guitar and then we've used some really really tight narrow surgical eq cuts to reduce the impact of the uh, really heavy snare drum and the hi-hats next up in the next video i'm going to show you a separate technique to add in addition to this using some downwards expansion using ableton's multiband compressor so stay tuned for that thanks